food is part of culture and it's already intertwined through their very long history um, and the journey that Cambodian gone through, the influences and many um, other things. And when it comes to, you know, food is part, again, it's part of culture. And I do not think any culture is stay on its own as pure, right? But a few things that I could think of that differ Cambodian food um, compared to our neighboring country. Number one, that originally we never really cook our dishes automatically spicy. It's always been a, um, a um, um, an option um, as an condiment, um, so people can help themselves to um, to give to, to get a cake, you know, from the spices. Um, so meaning chili is always been served in um, you know fish sauce or soy sauce or with salt or just by itself. And looking at that, it's also mean to me, you know, that we cook that the way we cook is to feed everyone in the family. And I, and I really um, appreciate that, um, having opportunity to, to, to make it my, my, my own, just add a few things that I like. But this is a question that I had so many years, um, and I would like, and I thought that I wasn't being able to answer the question, what is Cambodian food? And I thought that if I, you know, devote my time to do this full time, and now more than full time, almost more than seven years, I still do not know what is Cambodian food. Because the more I dive deeper into it, the more I realize that it's so much more that I don't know. So I often say to people when they come and ask me the same question you are asking me now, I said, you know, Cambodian food and other and uh, and and, uh, um, and other food in in our region, it's just like a relationship. You have to be in it to know how it they are different. <laughs> and that's all I can say. The more I learned, the more I know that a lot more to be learned. <laughs> when I think of Cambodian food, it's like a rich variety of different ingredients and different types of forms of, of uh, food. Um, I would say it's, I really like it. Um, the flavoring is definitely there. It's balanced, but it's also not light, but I, I like the way it tastes. Um, I initially thought it would be like a bit too much for my stomach, but actually uh, I'm doing, I'm doing fine. And yeah, it's unique and I'm really enjoying it. I would say the current experiences that we've had with Cambodian food has really demonstrated how conscientious the Cambodian people are. Um, they've really have taken into thought about like what they want to show, but also how will we receive it. Um, whether it be like providing more vegan options or even adding in a little complimentary fries, um, this merging of hospitality and hospitality from an understanding about their visitors' taste as well as pride for their own country um, has made the eating experience very, very, very enjoyable. <laughs> Um, but come back to me once we eat some real company. <laughs> Thank you.
I shall uh, I'll, I'll take it. Try it, try it. It, it, it is quite my but you should you should try it so you know. Alright. Are you doing the damn chili cakes? Yeah. Should make myself. Alright. So let's tell ourselves we're good. It's good. Well, she's we're adding this one, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, that's the reason we mm. watch it. Wait, how much are we adding again? Chocolate. Just like one. Uh, you know, Food used to be something that we are very proud of, um, and we use food to to explain who we are. Meaning, if you invite anyone to your house, you would like to tell them how wealthy you are, how creative you are. It it will be displayed on the table, right? So it through so many processes and the, the label of love by so many people in the kitchen to produce amazing and so many diverse um, dishes on the table. And it's a, a, a meal uh, and at a time, a platform that where people used to not only impress um, other guests, but also the culture through that food and the history and the story of Cambodia through that food. After that, Food becomes survival food, um, and people um, died um, because of starvation. While the country made so much rice, but people died from starvation and sickness. Under the genocide regime, as you know, uh, the Khmer Rouge organization not only destroyed the tradition, religion, and no city. Only pe all of the people must live in the countryside, and <clears throat> all uh, people have no uh, private property, so they have to eat, they have to work all together. Especially, we speak about eating, about uh, meal and food, because uh, they closed market. We, at that time, did not market, did not money, so the food must be very poor. You know, sometimes the same. Yeah. And uh, people, Cambodian people, mostly the the uh, Khmer Rouge organization allow us to eat only porridge. porridge. So uh, under the Khmer Rouge, is food only two, uh, I think uh, maybe two, three of type of food. The Cambodian food, we have a lot of traditional and not traditional also. But uh, the food, the very special food, we, didn't, we never we had under the Khmer Rouge. Only, I, I told you, only three, four type of food. What it is. And the same and boring food, yeah, and we have to eat it. Yeah. Have a soap. Thank you. Thanks, and then by then we will be able to try it. Whether yeah, we need to adjust anything or not. That you and you yours not good, oh. and it is. Oh, okay, thank you. After I mix it well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you should try yours and try his. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, this is not insulting, but you know sometimes this is, this is something that it. it about cooking class, we try to use the same measurement, but it can turn out so differently. <laughs> um, so, okay, let me help fix it, all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nine, ten, eleven. What if I, if I start getting extra? Well, then the uh, ratio would not be correct. Oh, I think your dinner would up. not be good. It would, it would blow up. <laughs> you see, when I when I uh, put it in, yeah. it stay in this. In this line? Yep. Oh, it needs to go within that one. I see. You see what I mean? Oh my God, it's okay. In one yeah, yeah. small spot. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, it's a little... I never thought of that, but... <laughs> but one thing that I'm afraid, will it stay? It should be. It should. Yeah. So I think it works. Do you like <laughs> Through the 
the time, it also taught not. It also taught um, uh, uh, people um, that know nothing about uh, um, food in the forest. You know, they've learned to observe animals, whatever they could eat, meaning it's not poison. So they start to do that too. Um, and um, insects has become a very, very big part of what we, we, we ate uh, because it also gives us protein, also flavors and texture. Um, and go back to the insect. A lot of people of the world um, believe that Cambodia um, started eating insects and eating insect culture is the legacy from Khmer Rouge, but it's actually not true. Cambodia has been um, uh, eating insects as, as um, well, for people who are wealthy. Insect wasn't um, chose to eat uh, for um, uh, people that are, you know, um, that are lacking of food. But this is a pleasure for lots of people who are very, very rich. It's just something that they love to eat. We did not eat it because we were very poor or were looking for food. But it just become more because we were needing more food. So you know, when I grew up, I liked eating it, but not necessarily um, understood that when we eat the, um, the shrimp with the shell or the tiny fish with the bones, I know that we growing up never had um, a fresh meal to drink. So it's, it's so much based on what we eat, you know? We have these that provide us not only just protein, but also the calcium, right? But also many other greens and vegetables that also provide us those um, 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 vitamins that our body needs on the top of the dairy that we don't have here. What I'm trying to do right here is to push or make room for everyone. Um, make room for everyone. Make room for every shrimp <laughs> to touch the, the spoon. Because I would like this um, um, uh, shrimps to cook evenly. That means they have to stay in one layer, not on top of each other. You see? Every single one touches the big spoon. And then it might be splashing, so just um, be careful. One, two, and three. Just put it right in, right in. Quick, as quick as possible. One, two, and three. ASAP. Right. Oh um, yeah. people who are uh, was known or known secretly that they know anything, not necessarily food, but anyone has high knowledge, um, skills, um, will be the targeted one, right? Um, and people also fled to different parts of the world. And up to this day, some of them, believe it or not, that still don't want to come back, and they still dramatize and do not, and believe that Cambodia is still in a dark place. So, and I witnessed all of that, going back and forth to the U.S. and spending time with um, uh, Cambodian community. Some of them, they are in their 70s, still don't want to come back because they still remember all the hardship not only for them don't want to come but they also tell their children not to come so why i'm saying all of this it's it's yeah it's it's more than a, um it's just a loss you know but it's the it's the it's a it's a bad memories and it's the being 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 a human but not wanting to express who you are I think, and you know, it's through food, it's through culture, it's through arts, but once people are not there and having the, the willing because they don't trust in it, because they still dramatize from it, who would want to do that, right? Because this not only affects or last, but also doesn't motivate the younger generations to, to continue um, or keeping or trying to uh, and bring back the forgotten flavor because they just don't see why.
of course, you know, during that time, everything, uh, life was hard. But right after Khmer Rouge, it wasn't that easy either. And that's when I was born. And I witnessed that we were eating quite a few things. And I almost believe that Cambodian food is nothing but those few dishes. Because we, our parents cooked with what available. And they were always very busy to make a, a living, to make family again. So, and a lot of the knowledge, of course, still, if they could afford the ingredients later on, they would continue that um, in the family. But the, the, the <laughs> But when, when, when time went by, um, the child, the children who was born before my Rouge, like myself, we started to to be somewhere else. Meaning a lot of the, or like go to town for better education, this and there, right? Which also doesn't allow the, um, the elderly people who the one who cook at home doesn't uh, um, uh, um, um, motivate them to cook a big meal to celebrate anymore because everyone is gone. And everyone, you know, um, um, you know, what I'm trying to say here is that urbanization also doesn't help um, for to keep the um, the culture of cooking and the food um, um, either because we we were somewhere else and the elderly people has no one home to cook for. Um, and also no one's home to learn from them. Um, and then when I come to town and I uh, started to uh, travel around Cambodia, that's when I started to see that Cambodian food is much, much more than what I knew. After that, started to see uh, numbers of restaurants um, and they would you know, call it Cambodian restaurant, but they have to twist um, their dishes because they don't believe that Cambodian cuisine would fit your palate. And they have to make it, they have to modernize it, they have to um, have, um, you know, um, I don't know, um, um, I don't know. It's, it's, they, they just need to do something to, to, to make it, they believe make it more interesting or milder or things like that. So for me, it's not only like I could see. For me, I'm not trying to um, tell that they are wrong because I never believed that we have to be the way we were thousand years ago in order to promote who we really were or really are. There are so many things that the world can enjoy, you know? And for example, we use um, the fermented shrimp, right? So it's all about understanding the balance. And you love it, and it's fine, right? So I think Cambodian food, like other food, like other cuisine, it's all about time and time to be um, to be uh, the world to be educated with our, um, our palate, and it's also I think that the time for the world to accept who we are as well. In Cambodian culture and in all cultures, I think food plays a massive role in the identity that one has with the culture. Like because I one reason I think it's like that is because it's really easy to convey the culture with other people in different cultures just by sharing the food. And I think that the food can have a lot of stories to tell and history behind it. And it's just a good way of conveying that history and culture. I think food has been very important in Cambodian culture, especially because of the genocide and the fact that so many recipes were definitely taken away. So finding just another way to restore the culture of Cambodia from pre-genocide to after genocide and just using it as another form of healing. And I think this is what I was like talking about with the performing arts is that it's like a method of healing. And I think just by restoring some of those traditional recipes, they're like almost reclaiming their culture again. Yeah, so what from what I've seen, Cambodian food revolves a lot around well, the cooking, obviously, but it's a group experience. We took a cooking class with Chef Nak, and we all contributed, making each other's banana bowls or 
marinades, so I think that has a lot to do with it, so a bonding experience. Secondly, Cambodian food demonstrates the rich resources that the country has. So, for example, there's pistachios and much of food. Also, there are carrots, there's fish, there's shrimp, there's sweet and sour, there's peppers, there's a whole variety. So, it's not only just the Bonnie experience, but also a demonstration of what the nation of Cambodia has. So from what I've gathered at, my, at our short stay here in Cambodia is that food here is a more communal experience. Um, there's definitely like an element of like, like memory, like especially with Chef Nat. She was showing us foods and she was saying everything is from her memory, from her childhood. Um, there's like a, it's like deeper than just what you're eating and it, and it tastes good. Like, I feel like um, I've, I've noticed like a lot of differences between Cambodian food and American food. Um, not just in flavor, but I feel like in America when we eat a food, it's just like, oh, it tastes good. But there's such a deeper meaning to the, the cooking and the experience of it all. It's like a, everybody's coming together to cook or to eat together. And we're all, we're all laughing, we're all talking, making jokes. And it's an overall like a deeper experience, I think, here. And then on the more of the flavor side, I would say that um, we see uh, there's like more complex flavors and they, they focus on a larger palate than just sweet and salty like America does. I've seen a lot of more sour, I've seen some bitter. Um, so it's just a more well-rounded cuisine, I think, in general. So I I hosted a group of family, uh, 15 of them, who uh, their parents fled Cambodia uh, during the Khmer Rouge and been living in the U.S. and they never they never came to Cambodia until um, that time. So. When we spend time cooking, talking about food, tasting the food, the story about our ingredients, the story behind what we were cooking, I do what I did because I believe in it. But I never actually knew that it's a time for them to heal. To heal and to believe that we have the potential. And the world should know Cambodia more than our, you know, amazing temples. And the sad thing about there, under the dark time about Khmer Rouge. So I actually never thought of that until they sent me an email that the time I spent with you learning about Cambodian food and understanding the potential and what you try to do to recover Cambodia and using the food angle, telling story about Cambodia through 
um, your stories, your, um, your, your dishes, it's the time for me to heal and I, and I thank you for doing that. And it's also make them feel like that they have part to, 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 to be in it too, you know? And they don't feel that they are, because they, they was born there, doesn't mean that they are, uh, doesn't mean that they, 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 they can help Cambodia um, uh, uh, this way. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. And this is just one example. Um, with little um, small thing, what we can call food, well, not really small, but it has a very, very big impact um, because this is something that we um, that we eat. It's for our mental. It's for our um, um, uh, um, physical. But it's 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 something that so much beyond that. It's more than just to fulfill us. But it's our story, our um, uh, memories. Uh, you know, it's 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 set time and it's um everything is in there. And I have to say that learning about food, Cambodian food, through the time, it taught me so much to appreciate not only my cuisine but my country and my people in general. Yeah. Edge. Yeah. Food. Oh, this is good. It's not rude to start with. No, they're not here yet. Oh, it's easy. It's easy. I can't even. It's a food guy. A food guy. A food guy. It's a No, this is just... Oh. This, this is my favorite. I remember this. Mm. Uh, oh my god, this is so good. Mm. It's pretty good. Something I've noticed is that along the course of our trip, the further we move from the capital city, Phnom Penh, and visit more rural villages, in my opinion, the better the food gets. And as for our homestay in Bonte Shamar, we had a breakfast today. It was the best meal I had on the whole trip, so I think that just shows best food is mom's cooking. In Bonte Shamar, when we had food with the homestay, I learned that even though there were like as little ingredients as there were, we were still able to have a full meal and end up feeling really full and nourished after it and it was still tasted really good. So I think in my day to day life and for the future, I will try to make the most of what I have and end up hopefully having a really good product. I would like to tell the world that I'm as a person, start cooking since I was four, and being and be able to explore more about Cambodian food, um, because I wanted to know more. I wanted to connect to my roots, and would like to be able to tell the world and to answer to my questions to myself: What is Cambodian food? 
has begun. And I and I have to be honest that I decided to drop up to, to, to give up my webpage job to do this. And I'm very proud to say that I still don't know what it is. Because we are so special, because we are so diverse. And I start learning and I start well, researching since I was um, in, in, from 2005. And up to now, I'm still on the journey. Because it's so much that I don't know. And the more I've, I, I, I've done, the more I feel like a lot more need to be done. So I would like to tell the world that Cambodia has more than Uncle Wat, which is the best thing, or the killing field. We have a lot more story, beautiful story, and I'm here to invite everyone around the world to come and explore Cambodian food with me. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Beautifully said. It's amazing. Uh -huh. Well, I have to be honest, I really don't know. I wish I do, but I do. Yeah. Thank you. I thought that I that I knew, but I, I did not. Yeah. And I, you know, because of food, the, the more I travel, the more I, I, I learn to be more humble. And I also earn my patience because it's not, it's, it's a lot, a lot more complex than I could imagine. And it's so much more than what we see um, and, and cook. And that's something that I'm always, this is something that I, that motivates me to keep doing this. Yeah, because, because the world should know about us through our food. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>